OK, we're going to move quickly through some different topics now with a lightning round. Please keep your answers to a brief 15 seconds or less. We'll start with you, Ms. Blankenbecker. If someone tests positive from attending one of your campaign or a larger GOP event, would you continue to hold your own events? Um, well, I would continue to use the, the social distancing and the safeguards that we need to put in place the, to make sure that everybody who's at our events are safe. How about you, Mr. Negron? Absolutely. I would continue. Um, but again, we would hold those and everybody has the right and the freedom and the choice to come and uh, attend our event if that's what they choose to do. OK, this one goes first to Mr. Negron of New Hampshire's yes. many pro Second Amendment advocacy groups. Which one is the best and name one specifically? Uh, well, that's tough. I think they're all great, right? Anybody that promotes and defends the Second Amendment, um, I'm for. Uh, you know, gun owners, uh, New Hampshire gun owners, I think are, are, is a good one. You can't, you know, anybody that's fighting for me and my rights, I'm for them. How about you, Ms. Blankenbecker, favorite gun rights organization mm -hmm. in New Hampshire? Oh, I don't have a favorite, but I was, I, you know, I did receive the highest uh, rating from any of the gun, uh, gun groups in the, uh, from, sorry, from gun owners, uh, the New Hampshire Firearms Coalition in the state of all the congressional uh, members. So I'm really proud of that. But uh, I think any group that advocates for our Second Amendment is awesome, and uh, they all have my support. So first one to you, Ms. Blankenbecker here. You both ran for the same seat in 2018. What have you learned about your opponent from that experience? Well, you know, in 2018, we lost the seat by 13 points. And that that's, uh, you know, was a big loss. And we've had to overcome that. And we're moving on. But this is a new race. You know, what I learned was that where, where our campaign fell short was that we were having trouble with messaging. And we've done a great job getting our messaging out. And we've done, uh, you know, a great job. We've got a team on the ground. And uh, we've done a tremendous job. So um, that's time. Yeah. All right. Mr. Negron, what did you learn about your opponent in 2018? Sure. Well, let me help um, my opponent with some math. Um, the only thing you need to do is you have to get 50 plus, 50 plus 1. We got 42.2% of the vote, right? It's not 13 points. We need we needed 7.9. And that's what we learned. You know, our starting point is there. The people in 14 and 16, the nominees, did not come back. We're coming back, and I think the people of the 2nd Congressional District want that. Steve, the facts are the facts. It was 13 points. It was 13.3. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a little incongruous here, but uh, Mr. Negron, what's your favorite stop in the district when you're campaigning? Oh, wow. Um, I, like, I like the Redstone Rocket that's up in Warner. All right. How about you, Ms. Negron? Favorite stop in the 2nd District? Um, well, we love Louie Louie's in Lebanon. It's a great restaurant. It's been a family favorite from when we lived over in Lebanon, and I love to go back and visit that area. Okay, and final question of the lightning round, Ms. Blankenbecker. Should immigration from Europe be prioritized over other countries? I I'm sorry, can I, let me. I'll ask it again can here. Can you repeat that? Yeah, uh, thank uh, you. our final lightning round question here. Should immigration from Europe be prioritized over other countries? Oh, absolutely not. You know, we we are a land of, of immigrants and and certainly uh, we shouldn't be looking at where you're coming from, but the individuals who are coming into this this state of uh, this country. And so we welcome all. We have a, a process for folks to go through and we should be welcoming everybody and we shouldn't prioritize one country over another. Mr. Negron. Uh, not at all. You know, this this country is still a beacon of hope. Um, despite um, everything we see going on. So there shouldn't be any prioritization at all. Anybody that comes to this country has to follow the, the laws. We are a land of laws. There's a right way to do it. Let them do it, and then they're welcome in our country.